Hi everybody, my name's Laurie and I'm going to be working with Epic to bring you some information about birds. So we'll be talking about bird surveys and we'll be looking at how to identify bird species. So both um, looking at what they look like but also um, how to get started with bird song identification as well. So the estimated number of birds in the UK is 84 million pairs, which sounds pretty amazing. But actually 57% of that is made up of the 10 most common species. And it's thought that one in every 10 birds in the UK is a wren. So birds make really excellent indicators and they're monitored all across the world um, to measure change. They make such excellent indicators because we know a lot about their biology, their life history. So we've got lots of really useful data to form a baseline that we can then monitor against. And birds are such good indicators because they're found really widely in lots of different habitats. They have lots of different diets, lots of different um, niches, so different sort of ways in which they live their lives. So that can really tell us a lot about what's going on in our habitats. In the UK, bird indicators are calculated annually using data from monitoring schemes such as the Breeding Bird Survey and the Wetland Bird Survey. This allows us to report population trends over both a long term period since 1970, but also to look at more recent changes over a shorter term. So some of the steepest declines have been found within the farmland birds, and this includes lots of species that you'll find at the epic site. The steepest declines occurred between the mid-1970s and mid-1980s, as this was a time when we saw a real change in the way in which we do farming. So the loss of mixed farming and a move from spring to autumn sowing of arable crops, switching from hay to silage and increasing use of chemicals, as well as removing features such as hedgerows from our landscapes. So as well as making really good indicators of change, birds are also really important for providing what we call ecosystem services. So things that are really beneficial um, to us. Um, so things like um, seed dispersal and also biological control. But birds can also be really important pollinators as well. So we tend to think of things like hummingbirds um, as, as pollinators, but there are also um, birds in the UK, so things like chiff chaffs, blue tits, that will be feeding um, on pollen, um, particularly in the early part of the year, um, on tree pollen. And if you spot one of those in the garden, you'll often see there's kind of uh, yellow staining on those feathers around the beak. So that's something to look out for. So in this first video, we're mostly going to be talking about how to identify a species that you found and I'll give you some tips about what to look out for. But it's such an important time of year for birdsong that of course we will be talking more about that um, in future videos as well. So the list of UK bird species currently stands at 620 from 82 different families. But don't worry, that includes all of the things that have turned up here just very occasionally as vagrants. So when you first spot a bird and you're trying to work out exactly what species it might be, there's a few things that you can look at and think about to really help you narrow it down. So the size and the shape of the bird, its coloration and any sort of patterning that it has but also where you are, what sort of habitat you're in, and what time of year it is. The shape of the bird can help you to work out what family it belongs to. So the shape of its body and its head, its beak, and also things like the length of its legs, its neck, and its beak. So you might not recognize this as a song thrush, but you can probably see that it's a very similar shape to the blackbird, which is also a thrush. A bird's size can be difficult to judge, so try and compare it to something that you know, Maybe something like a wood pigeon or a blackbird or a house sparrow. The things that you notice about a bird's behaviour can be really helpful. So is it on its own or in a flock? What's it feeding on? How is it moving? Where is it feeding? Where is it singing? 
The habitat you're in is a fantastic clue for identifying your bird, although it's always worth remembering that birds can turn up anywhere and there are lots of birds that migrate. This leads us on to the time of year. This is also a really important thing to bear in mind because although many birds are resident here, there are lots of others that migrate and only spend perhaps the summer or the winter in the UK. As well as the colour of the bird, it's also important to look for features like eye stripes or eye rings and whether there are bars of colour on the wings or in the tail. If a bird has got barring, where is it on its body? This is where your photos and notes can be really useful. Most importantly, just remember to really enjoy watching the birds. Be patient with yourself, it takes a while to learn these things. So there are things that you may find it helpful to have when you're going out looking at birds. Of course binoculars can be very useful um, to help you see features better and a notebook is always really useful um, so you can write down what you're seeing and it can be a really good way to remember for when you go to look things up in a book afterwards. So there's loads of resources available to help identify your bird. There's some really good books that you can um, take a look at, but there's also some really useful resources online. So um, the RSPB and the BTO have got lots of things to help you with bird identification, um, especially with some of the trickier species. But we'll also be looking at this as we go through these videos. So we really hope that you found this video useful and it will encourage you um, to get out and have a look what birds you can see out of the window and in your garden or on your local walk. If you've got any questions, if there's any identifications that you'd like a bit of help with, you can always post some photos or video if you want onto the Epic Facebook page.